Good evening folks. So one thing I've learned since uh, starting to make videos um, on YouTube is that if you make videos that are too large people won't watch them to the end and uh, because of that they miss out on some really good information. So I'm going to try to keep the videos really short but there's a payback and that is I can't give it the detail that I'd like to. So what I want to do is produce two sets of videos. One is with the physics so that you can um, get the detail. So those people who actually want to learn about the physics of uh, what I'm saying can watch the longer video. And those people who just hit what the entertainment, they want to hear me, you know, debunk a flat earther. Well, I'll make a short one for that. So this video is going to be a short one. Okay, I'll see if I can squeeze in all of the things that I need to in this very short video. So naturally, I won't be going into much detail. Anyway, this all started from a uh, video that I watched with two very fine YouTubers, extremely smart gentlemen, uh, that's uh, Dr. Bob, the science guy, and uh, Blue Marble. I really urge you to go and visit their channels you'll actually learn some stuff over there. Now, let's start on this one. This particular video will be about two models. One is a model of the atmospheric pressure and the other one is a model of the pressure in a container. Now, one of the things that uh, Bob and uh, Blue Marble were discussing were, was a video put out by the Flat Earth Guru Queen. That's the one I've been speaking about lately, the one that all the drones go to to get their information from. Now, what this person does is he cherry picks uh, various things that people say, and one of the things that he said uh, specifically was that there's no difference between uh, gas pressure in a container and gas pressure, atmospheric uh, pressure, even though um, Blue Marble was doing his best to try and explain it. It just wasn't getting through. I'm not really sure if it wasn't getting through because he didn't want it to or was because or he's just thick as a brick. Okay? Doesn't matter either way. Alright, so let's get on with this one. Alright, so first of all in a container, the relationship between the gas and, and the container and these variables, pressure, volume and temperature. Now this isn't something that's been dreamt up day before yesterday. This has been around a long, long time, since the days of Robert Boyle, Guy Lussac, Charles, those people who came up with this, with this uh, equation here. So, again, pressure, volume and temperature. All of those things are intrinsically linked. Here, for instance, I've created a container. If you want to vary the, um, the pressure, you can change either the volume or the temperature. Either of those will change it. Okay, so more temperature, uh, get, particles get to get around quicker and they hit each other faster and hit the walls faster. That creates more pressure. For instance, if you want to see this um, in action, fill a balloon and put it in the freezer and you'll see that it will go down. The reason is because there's less energy, less particles are going to be hitting the side of the walls. Right, so there's a typical experiment that you can do for yourself. All right, now the chemists needed more than that. So they came up with um, PV equals NRT. And if you see pressure then is equal to NRT over volume. Okay, now what is N? N is the number of moles. Mass of all the gas. Okay, so it's all the gas, the mass of it all, right? And yes, gas particles have mass. And all the gas divided by the mass of 6.02 by 10 to the 23 atoms. That's quite a very, very large number of atoms. And those atoms together, let's say for helium, add up to 4 grams. So this, therefore, this is the mass of all the gas divided by the atomic mass, okay, or molecular mass. All right, 
R is the ideal gas constant for all gases and uh, comes to 8.31 so that's if you like a constant that's averaged out and temperature is in Kelvin and volume in litres okay so what's special about gas in a container pressure volume temperature let's have a look across here what have we got here helium balloon Flatties say, well, why does the helium balloon defy uh, gravity? Well, it doesn't. What happens is you've got amount of volume of a balloon. And within that balloon, you've got weight over volume that gives it the density. Okay, well, outside of that balloon, a similar volume that's in the balloon will have much more mass much more weight okay weight is mg don't confuse weight and mass okay so therefore this is heading towards the ground this is going to replace all of this gas that's around here is going to try and replace the gas of the balloon and force that balloon up okay so the same amount of place of that of that volume is going to be replaced by gas from there it's going to move down and replace that balloon so that forces that balloon to rise that's it okay gravity still has an effect on it if you remove that constraint if you remove that the, the air that's around it that helium balloon will fall if you had it in a vacuum it would fall if you had it in less air it would fall Okay, and how do we know this? Well, 121,000 feet is as high as you can get one of these balloons. Why is that? Well, that's simple. It's because when it gets up to 121,000 feet, the atmosphere is so thin, there's so little of it, it no longer is heavier for the same amount of volume than the balloon. So it can't head down to displace the balloon. So it can't push the balloon up. So the balloon can't go any higher. Okay, that's why a helium balloon can't go any higher than 121,000 feet. Now, this is the silly part for flat earthers. Some of them think that despite this struggle, for this balloon to be up there at 121,000 feet because the air is so thin it's got a 4,000 kilogram satellite hanging off it how dumb is that? well it gets even dumber some of them think that there's actually a rocket hanging off it too unbelievable okay so now you know that please stop saying that nonsense okay alright let's have a look at atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure atmos meaning atmo meaning vapor and spheric obviously meaning around a sphere well let's have a look at this I've drawn something here it's uh, at this scale that red line over there representing the atmosphere would be way 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 more thicker than it needs to be in fact if it was this scale, like this, the atmosphere would barely be thicker than a piece of paper. Now this is hugging the Earth. So the, it's not hard to visualize that the Earth having this thin, thin, thin layer around it, would, this layer would move with the Earth as the Earth moves. That's not hard to think. That's not hard to believe. Okay. Here is a column. This column goes from the sea all the way up, as high as you can go, and to the point where the amount of gas at this end is so little that it doesn't matter anymore. Okay, so in other words, at that point, say 100 kilometers, you measure the, uh, 
the, the mass of this, all of the gas that's in here, weighs, if this was a square inch over here, would weigh 14.7 pounds. Okay, so this, so that is the mass, the weight of all of this, of all of this gas that's in that column. Okay, mass of all of this in that column. Over one square inch. Now, if we're talking about Pascal's, then Pascal is one Newton over a square meter. All right, so a Newton is a unit of force, which is also weight. So when I say weight, okay, weight is mass by gravity. Okay, mass times the gravitational field. Well, that shouldn't be surprising uh, that it is, because if you look at um, Einstein's um, uh, general relativity, mass bends space-time. Okay, so it doesn't matter what size the mass is. All right, so the Earth is a huge mass, bends space-time, so things that are in the influence of, of the Earth will head towards the Earth. Well, every single gas particle has mass, so it's affected by the influence of Earth's gravitational field. Okay, so gravitational field on its own doesn't do anything. That's, that's a potential. But as soon as you introduce a mass to it, that becomes that becomes the well in space-time. That becomes the situation where the gas particle has to head, has to head towards this large mass. And this is what's manifest as things falling. Okay. All right. Let's carry on. So everything with mass has the potential to fall. But some things don't fall because they are opposed by other forces, like, for instance, when we discussed with that balloon over there. Okay, so we've got pressure is force over unit area, which is weight over unit area. And what's weight? Just replace weight over here with mg, mass by gravity. Okay, so in this model, that's how gravity comes into it. All right, so in this model, atmospheric pressure is different from pressure in a gas container because this is all about pressure, volume, and temperature. And this one here is about mass, gravitational field, and over the unit area. Okay, pretty simple. So now you know what the difference is. Now, I'll make a video that goes into all of this much more carefully so that uh, you can understand it more fully. But for this one here, we'll just keep it short and sweet. And hopefully you'll watch it. Uh, people have watched this to the end. Now, if you have, then you'll hear this. Please press the subscribe button. Uh, if you haven't already, and press the dislike or the like button, whatever floats your boat, press that little bell and you'll hear, uh, you'll know when uh, more of these videos are coming. Okay, thank you very much for showing up and I'll catch you later. Cheers.